Hey, Facebook friends. Hello, hello. Give me one second while I share this out. Let me turn this down. I don't need any copyright claims. Uh, share. How y'all doing today? What's going on? Uh, that's a vibe. 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 Okay. Hey, P. Jackson. How you doing, my dear? Um, give me one second while I share this out onto Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, I did my first reel last night. I guess reels is Instagram's um, version of TikTok that they stole. It's not for me. I don't understand it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Hey, Zephyrina, welcome back, hon. Okay. There we go. Pin the comment. Okay, we are all shared out on Instagram and Facebook. What time is it? Okay, we're getting started in three minutes. Three minutes. Tell your friends I'm on. Let them know I'm here. Uh, to my friends on Facebook, couple things. Please, as you come in, say hi so I can greet you properly because Facebook will not tell me who is watching if, uh, uh, you, know, um, you know, unless you start saying something. Hi, Margaret. And second, there is a long delay on Facebook, about 30 to 60 seconds. So it does take me a little bit to get your questions or comments. So just be patient with me, okay? Uh, so we're getting started in two minutes. Um, hold on Instagram. I got to put a miss you too, doll. I got to put on my do not disturb Instagram. Hold on. Okay. There we go. There we go. Um, so tonight it is a star studded cast on our docket tonight. Will Smith is making an appearance. Um, Nick Cannon is also going to do a cameo in the show. And Daddy Yankee will be stopping by. Um, <laughs> one day, my show will have celebrities on it. Hey, Tampika, how you doing? Yes, one day, my show will have celebrities on it. Don't worry. I see it in the future. All right, we're getting started in about a minute. So at 8.05, I need you to share this out to your friends, your friends who are, you know, in the beginning phases of their business, your friends who are thinking about starting a business, your friends who are just interested in legal issues and celebrity stuff. Uh, this is for them, okay? Um, let me make sure I have my remote ready so I can pause the music. You know, I try to make sure it's nice and low so I don't get any copyright claims on my vidges. <laughs> All right. How's your week going so far, guys? We're over the hump. Wednesday's over. Oh, actually, it's 8.05. It's time to start. I'm going to hit record. Um, get ready, guys. All right. And we are live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. Uh, this is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. Uh, if this is your first time watching, if you don't know who I am, I'm Natalie Pierre-Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC. <laughs> Thanks, Zephyrina. Uh, I am the uh, 
Yes. So that, uh, that is my company. It is a business formation firm. What that means is I help entrepreneurs, people in the beginning phases of their business. I help you guys get your business paperwork together. So things like registering your business with the state, making sure you have appropriate contracts, EIN numbers, DUNS numbers, uh, operating agreements, non-disclosure agreements, hiring policies, basic brand protection strategies. I help you do all of those things. If you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you do all of those things, I'm a licensed attorney have been one for 14 years and counting with a specialization in business formation i started multiple businesses for myself and others both online and offline i've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship the law education hospitality and administrative support and most important i'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible not everybody has the time the money or the desire to go to business school or to law school but if you're going to be successful in business there are just some concepts that you need to know um and that's the end of that is is just the way it is so that is why i'm here if you would like um to contact me to see if we can work together so that we can come up with a solid strategy for your business uh, i invite you to go to linktree forward slash npl consulting firm and set up your one-on-one uh business formation strategy session okay um now in those sessions you get uh You get a detailed PDF document giving you a step-by-step roadmap along with, you know, applicable forms and, you know, all the links that you need to, uh, to get your business legally registered. And you get one hour of my time to help you put everything together. Um, but if you're not ready to make that investment yet, you have to talk to me Tuesdays where you can kind of pick my brain. You get 25 minutes for $25. Um, and for first time clients, you get a free 15 minute consultation. So go to linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm and go check that out. Okay. But that is enough about me. Let's talk about the show. Uh, for those who might be new, I see that there are, we've got some numbers in Facebook, um, So in case there are some new people, here's how the show works. Uh, I pull stories from the news, from blog sites, stories that you people send me. Actually, uh, one of tonight's stories was sent to me by Miss Whitney. Um, And I pull the ones that have lessons that we can learn as business owners, and we talk about them, okay? So this is a discussion between all of us. Um, don't be afraid to let your opinion be known or to ask questions as long as they are respectful. That is what makes this exciting. That's what makes it fun. Okay. I'm also going to ask you questions, um, you know, to make sure that you're understanding, understanding what's happening and to make sure that you're, that you're staying alert. Okay. You know how, like when you were in school and the teacher would catch you off guard. That's what I try to do sometimes, but don't worry about me, but it's fun. It's all in good fun. Okay. So let's get started. All right. First story that we are talking about tonight. Uh, If you are a Will Smith fan, give me the smiley face with the sunglasses emoji. Hi, love Loki or love Loki. Uh, If you are a Will Smith fan, give me the smiley face with the sunglasses emoji. Okay. Um, Now, while you guys are doing that, um, a, f- a while ago, I want to say maybe a month or so ago, I told you, I reported to you guys that Will Smith and Warner Brothers um, were being sued by a couple of production companies, one by the name of TW3 Entertainment and one by th- and another one by the name of Power Move Multimedia. Um Okay. Now, why were they being sued? Apparently, Will Smith and Warner Brothers, they are in the beginning stages of developing a biopic about uh, Serena. Thank you, AP Jackson. Thank you, Zephyrina. About um, Serena and Venus Williams' father, Richard Williams. Now, this biopic is supposed to be called King Richard, right? Here's the problem. Uh, TW3 Entertainment and Power Move Multimedia, apparently three years ago, or a little over three years ago, thank you for the, for the glasses, Margaret, um, they had purchased the, 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 st- the rights to tell uh, Richard Williams' story from them for $10,000. Now, I'm going to repeat that again. Richard Williams, the father of Serena and Venus Williams, the top two tennis players in the world, three years ago, sold away his life rights, well, not life rights, but 
the rights to tell his life story to, uh, I guess, a smaller media company for $10,000. Now, this biopic never has, has not come around. We don't know if it's in production. But now Warner Brothers and Will Smith, they are interested in making, you know, probably a big budget biopic about Serena and Venus's dad, Richard, you know, and how he groomed these girls to be the top tennis players in the world. Um, and TW3 and Power Move were like, whoa, 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 whoa. We purchased the right to tell that story. What are you doing? Well, um, you know, they, they started to, to, to um, file suit against Warner Brothers and Will Smith, a copyright infringement suit, because they had purchased the rights to the story. But apparently... Warner Brothers and Will Smith and these media companies, they have settled their differences. Now, we don't know how. All they would say is that the issue has been resolved informally. What do y'all think resolved informally means? Why do you think uh, Warner, uh, TW3 and Power Move Multimedia have decided to not go forward with this suit against Warner Brothers and Will Smith? What do you guys think happened, right? Because Power Move Multimedia and TW3 Entertainment, they invested $10,000 in the rights to tell Venus and Serena's dad's uh, life story. And Will Smith and Warner Brothers were coming, trying to take that right from under them. So they had every right to go to the court to, to, you know, to try and file suit because they did purchase the rights. But... They're not going forward because they say that it has settled. It's been resolved informally. What do you think happened between Warner Brothers and these two smaller media companies? Uh, Margaret said Warner Brothers bought them out. Um, Tracy Cornelia Graham said they are a little fish. They're uh, yes, Tracy. They're a little fish, but that is the that is why um, uh, intellectual property like copyrights and trademarks are so important because it doesn't matter if you're a little fish if you have those those legal uh you know stamps that say you own something margaret warner brothers did not buy them out as far as we know there has there is no um indication that warner brothers bought them out does anybody else have any suggestions i personally think that warner brothers cut them a big check they paid ten thousand dollars for the rights to tell this story because Will Smith and Warner Brothers, they're going to be able to go forward with, with this movie. They're going to be making it. So King Richard is coming out, right? So if these two smaller multimedia companies, um, sold it for a large amount, I don't think anything was, was, uh, yeah, I think a check was cut. I think that Warner Brothers, Maybe, you know, through through these two companies, maybe $100,000, maybe $50,000. Remember, they purchased the rights for $10,000. So, you know, even if they made twice that, they still made out like bandits, right? Um, so I think a check was cut uh, to get T3, TW3 Entertainment and Power Move Multimedia off the board so Warner Brothers and Will Smith could go forward with this biopic. Um, and I'll be very interested... Um, Margaret Massey said, isn't that the same as buying them out? Um, when, when you say, when you say buy them out, I, in my head, I picture them actually purchasing the company. If you're saying that they paid them for the rights, yes, I think that's what happened. I think they did that kind of under the table. So my apologies if I misunderstood what you were saying, but when you say buy them out, I, in my head, that is meaning that Warner Brothers purchased these two multimedia companies. But if you're saying buy them out in terms of they paid them for these these life rights that they purchased, then yeah, you're totally correct. Uh, <clears throat> Zephyrina said they did. Yeah, so I think a check was cut. Um, but I want to make sure that I that I that me and Margaret, you know, we're on the same page here because I think I may have misunderstood her comment before. We good, Margaret? Let me know, girl. Okay, yes, yes. They, uh, yes, they paid them. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. My brain just works a little bit different. Don't worry about me. <laughs> but yeah, you're absolutely right, Margaret. They did, I think, uh, well, not right, but 
you agree with me, so I think you're right. But I think that a large check was cut to these multimedia companies. Large for enough for them. Uh, now, I'm sure that Warner Brothers are going to be making millions and millions of dollars off of this production. So, uh, you know, we'll wait and see. All right. Uh, but good, um, good luck to them. I, I look forward to seeing it. Now, moving on. Anybody here watch Wild and Out? If you have ever watched Wild and Out, give me a give me a W in the comments. Give me a W in the comments if you've ever watched Wild and Out. Now you know a few weeks ago we talked about this as well. Um, Nick Cannon was fired from his position uh, as a host of. I forget which show, a show with Viacom. Nick Cannon has a deal with Viacom. He said some things that made them very unhappy and they basically terminated his contract and fired him as a host. Um, okay, so we've got some Wild and Out fans. Thank you. Right? Now, um, part the, what, what made, what shocked everybody, in particular Nick Cannon, was that they fired him from the show Wild and Out, the show that he actually created and built up over the years that people know about that has launched a bunch of comedians' careers. And when we talked about it the last time, we talked about, you know, there's probably a clause in his contract stating that, you know, he, does, he doesn't have a right to anything that he creates with Viacom. He's probably got a development deal and, you know, they pay him a... a pretty penny to you know come up with ideas that are going to generate revenue for him now when nick cannon was filed from wild and out he was very upset he you know made a a public statement on social media saying that he demanded ownership of the show um you know just because you demand something doesn't necessarily mean that you get it um but nick cannon truly believes that he is owed for you know his work uh, you know in creating and building up wild and out and he is suing viacom for 1.5 billion dollars 1.5 billion dollars um he said you know I, i've uh, there was a statement released like i said before he's created this um this platform he's built it up he has you know created jobs for for other entertainers um, he has generated a lot of revenue for Viacom and they, you know, they owe him more money. You know, they owe him money for all of the work that he put in, in making them a lot of money. Right. Uh, and he's saying that this $1.5 billion that he is suing for, he wants to donate it to, you know, charities and causes that he is passionate about. Now we don't have a word from Viacom as of yet. Um, but what do you guys think about Nick Cannon's lawsuit against Viacom? Do you think he has a valid claim for this $1.5 billion? Right now, remember he had a deal with Viacom. Usually when, when someone signs a deal with one of these big entertainment companies, you know, they pay you to create content for them, but they get to keep, you know, all of the rights they handle, you know, all of the trademarks, all the intellectual property, they get to keep all that. You get a nice, you know, beautiful paycheck, but they get to keep all of the rights to it. That's usually how these deals work. Now, this is something different where Nick Cannon has literally built up Wild and Out to where it's his own brand, and he feels like he's owed more. So what do you guys think about that? Do you think that Nick Cannon is justified in trying to get $1.5 billion out of Viacom for his role in creating and building up Wild and Out. What do you think? Oh, we're making good time. What do you think? I'm going to give you a little bit of time, Facebook, because I know that there is um, a, a delay. Falcon Chris thinks that he is justified in his lawsuit. Why do you think so, Falcon Chris? Because remember, we said that usually um, celebrities, when they get these deals with networks, you have a big contract where they pay you millions of dollars to develop content for them, but they get to keep all the rights. Why in this case should Nick Cannon be exempt from him from it? Uh, Falcon Chris said it's his talent. What, what do you what do you mean? Like where outside of the contract, what do you do you like what did Nick do that went above and beyond that would um, qualify him for this one point five billion dollars? 
And I and I am genuinely asking you this question because this is something that Nick Cannon is going to have to prove if he's allowed to go forward with this lawsuit. He has to prove that he went above and beyond what his contract was with, with Viacom, probably. Um, Falcon Chris said it's a, the culture value he brings to the table. Well, that's why they hired him. They hired Nick Cannon because of his culture value. You know, um, he, he's been a celebrity for quite some time. He's got a personality. That's why Viacom signed him up. But what in particular, in reference to Wild and Out, what, is, what are the concrete, you know, facts that we know, the concrete facts that he might be able to point to that might entitle him to this $1.5 billion that he's claiming is the worth of the Wild and Out brand? Any comments, Facebook? You, you all are quiet. Um, Margaret Massey said, I think he should get paid, but he didn't trademark Walden out, right? No, absolutely not. Uh, Nick Cannon did not trademark Walden out. The trademark for Walden out was at, is actually owned by Viacom. They applied for it in 2019. So, um, yeah, Nick Cannon does not own the, the name to Walden out. And he probably has a non-compete clause in his contract with Viacom, which might prevent him from going to another network and just creating another wild and out. So do we think that Nick Cannon is justified in this $1.5 billion lawsuit against Viacom? Is Nick Cannon's influence so great because of how he built up wild and out that he should be able to kind of go outside the contract and demand more money. Um, Falcon Chris uh, 67 said, they didn't know nothing about snapping and telling jokes about people's mamas. That's true. Uh, Wild and Out is a phenomenon, right? But again, that's why they hired Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon has his finger on the pulse. These big companies are not doing the research to, to create the content. They're just creating the people who know the culture and bringing them on and telling them to create the content and, you know, writing them a big paycheck. This is why they bring people like, like Nick Cannon on. Right? Um, Marvin Massey said, it sounds like he was just an employee, so he may not get paid. And I mean, in a sense, it might be that. I mean, like, if you, if you are working at your job, even if you, you know, are the best employee at your job, right? Maybe you might get a promotion, But are they going to make you, unless you're, you know, working in a law firm or something or some type of advertising, but for most jobs, even if you, you know, you're doing a stellar job and you are the top employee that they have, are they going to make you a partner in that business? Are they, are they going to break you off a piece of, you know, their, their, their dividends when, when stocks go up? Think like, I'm, this is a genuine question I'm asking you. So, you know, if we look at it from an employee perspective like that, because Nick Cannon was doing a lot for Viacom, right? Anyway, so uh, let's see. Falcon Chris said he brought his relationship with others to the show. That is very true. Nick Cannon, he, again, he's connected. That's why Viacom wanted him. Nick Cannon knows who people are, who knows who people are. He's got his finger on the pulse, and he is a smart man. He has been famous for a long time. He's done movies. He's done music. He is a known name. That is why Viacom hired him. But what Nick Cannon is probably going to have to prove is that Wild and Out is much bigger than just, you know, his development deal with Viacom. So I wish Nick Cannon well. I think he is a talented man, um, you know, who does a lot of good. Um, but this is just a cautionary tale that you need to, you know, read your contracts and protect your work and know what you are signing away when you sign these big contracts. Um, Falcon Chris said creative sweat equity is intellectual property to an extent Falcon Chris. It is to an extent, but having a legal copyright or trademark or patent on your work that is what gives you the, you know, ironclad security in your intellectual property. When you have it legally registered, it's on paper with the government, nobody can take it away from you. Okay? 
All right. Wow, we spent a long time on that one. I didn't really plan on spending that much time on it, but it's cool. All right. So before we move on to our last story of the evening, oh, um, Margaret Massey said no. Um, you don't think that? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Your job that they, they wouldn't they wouldn't make you a partner. Okay. All right. Before we move on to our last uh, story of the evening, I want to remind you that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you are in the startup phase of your business and you need somebody to write you out a plan so that you know, okay, I need to do this. I need to go register my, my business with the state. I need to, here's where I go get my EIN number. Here, here's what I need to do to open a bank account. Here's what I need to do to get my operating agreement together. Call your girl. That's what I do. I get startups started the right way, okay? Go to linktree forward slash NPL Consulting Firm and book your one-on-one -on -one coaching session today. All right, moving on to our last story of the evening. Uh, how many of y'all know that song Despacito? Uh, now, the one that became popular was the one that was with Justin Bieber, but it was originally a song with Daddy Yankee and somebody named Louis Fonsi. But how many know the song Despacito? If you know the song Despacito, give me the music emoji. If you know the song Despacito, give me the music emoji, okay? Give me the music emoji, eh, eh. Um... Nobody knows Despacito? Well, I'm going to move forward because I don't want the people in podcast land to hear all that dead air. No dead air podcast land. Okay. So now um, most of us know about Despacito. It came out a few years ago. Uh, we mostly knew the remix because of Justin Bieber, but it was originally by Daddy Yankee and another artist named Louis Fonsi. It is one of the, you know, most popular songs in the world, uh, the video was viewed millions and millions of times on YouTube. Uh, you know, it was a phenomenon. And I remember that at one point I couldn't go anywhere without hearing Despacito. And I was like, I am desperate to get away from this song. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Despacito, it's made a lot of money for a lot of people, right? Um, and there is a gentleman who wanted a piece of the Despacito pie. Uh, <laughs> there is an artist by the name of Newton Cortez. Um, he is a songwriter uh, and an artist, a, a singer. Um, and in 2006, he also wrote a song called Despacito. Uh, except uh, keep in mind, Despacito with Daddy Yankee and Justin Bieber was spelled D-E-S-P-A-C-I-T-O. So the last four letters are C-I-T-O. Newton Cortez wrote a song called Despacito in 2006 and spelled it S-I-T-O. So we ended it with S-I-T-O. Um, um, in Newton Cortez's eyes, this was enough of a similarity to uh, sue for copyright infringement. Um, he sued or, or tried to sue uh, Daddy Yankee uh, and Louis Fonsi, the original artist, as well as Universal Music Group and Erica Ender. Um, he wanted 20% of the profits gained from, uh, you know, album sales and things from Despacito, plus $50,000 for um, damages and then another $150,000 for punitive damages. So he wanted quite a chunk of money. Now, keep in mind, uh, Newton Cortez, the only, um, according to the court, because the court actually dismissed his uh, copyright infringement case, the only similarity between Daddy Yankee's Despacito and Newton Cortez's Despacito was that the name sounded the same. The lyrics weren't the same. Um, none of that. So the court... Uh, the, the court dismissed his copyright infringement claim. They said that at best, you maybe could have trademarked the name of the song Despacito, but copyrights reply to creations, you know, to works of art creations, not just titles. So unless Newton Cortez was able to show that Daddy Yankee and Louis Fonsi 
you know, took his lyrics or took the musical melodies of his Despacito, there was no copyright infringement claim. So they dropped the case and it is no longer going forward. Now, why did I pick this case? I want to explain to you guys how copyrights work. Copyrights protect your creations, your works of art. So if you uh, write a book, if you write a poem, if you are a choreographer and you record a performance and you know done by professionals in front of a live audience, if you make a work of art like a painting or a sculpture, um, what else? <clears throat> a drawing. Um, there, there are copyrights to so many different things, right? But they have to be full words. They can't just be, I mean, full works, I should say. They can't just be words. They have to be, you know, something that is very unique. Um, <laughs> AP Jackson said, have several Cito's. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Hi, Silverheart's 15. Yes. Copyrights refer to an entire body of work, not just a name. And especially like Despacito, I don't speak Spanish, but I'm assuming Despacito is an actual name, a, a word in Spanish. It might be. However, Newton Cortez, just to let you know, just because the names are the same, it's okay, Tanya, just because the names are the same doesn't mean that they copied your song, sweetheart. Okay, you need a little bit more than that. Don't waste people's time in the courtroom. Okay. So those are the stories that I had for you on this evening. We do have three minutes before we have to end. So, uh, I want to, uh, you know, if you guys have any quick questions, please feel free to drop them before our time ends. I, uh, we're going to be back here tomorrow at eight o'clock with more stories. So, you know, come on, tell your friends, bring them on. Um, what else? Make sure that you book your coaching sessions. Don't forget to download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. Also, make sure that you pick up Business Startup Basics that is going to give you a crash course in how to be a boss in these business streets. Um, what else? Make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube and my uh, podcast because your girl wants to get that, you know, that, that YouTube shmoney. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, that those are the stories that I wanted to share with you tonight. Um, if you don't have any questions, we can um, end a little bit early. Any questions about business formation? Any questions about the stories that we've covered? Uh, any questions about your personal businesses that you are trying to start? We've got about two more minutes. Um, I don't want to you know, run out on you without giving you a chance. I know that on Facebook, it takes a little bit of time. But I also want to thank you guys for being here. I've got some, I've got a, a good group here. Y'all really make the show interesting. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your participation. Um, thank you for sending me stories. You guys have been really good about that lately. And I really appreciate it because sometimes these stories be dry. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much. Have a good night and take care of yourselves. Okay. Good night. Bye.